distinction between members of the executive and members of the parliament. We shall now be looking into the characteristics of the parliamentary system or cabinet system of government. One, power is shared between the head of state and the head of government. The head of state is different from the head of government. The head of government enjoys just ceremonial powers, while the head of state is the one who really enjoys the real power of the state. Again, its members of the cabinet are also members of the parliament because the prime minister chooses from the members of the parliament, parliament those who are going to form his cabinet members. And these same people retain their portfolios as members of the parliament. And thirdly, members of the cabinet must hold the same view on government policies. Merits of the parliamentary system of government. One, it makes for harmony and cooperation between the executive and the legislature. Since, of course, members of the executive are equally members of the legislature. So there is this synergy between these two groups of persons. Again, it does not allow for dictatorship. And finally, it allows for quick decision. Since, of course, those who are taking the decision and implementing the decisions are almost belong almost to the same body. There is a fluidity between members of the parliament and members of the executive. There are a number of demerits. One, no one can be held responsible should anything go bad because of the principle of collective responsibility. And again, there is a fusion of powers between the parliament and the executive. This, of course, belies the idea of separation of powers. We shall now be talking about the differences between presidential and parliamentary system of government. One, in the presidential system of government, the executive authority solely lies on the president. But in the parliamentary, this authority is shared between the head of state and the head of government. Again, in the presidential system of government, the president and the cabinet members are not part of the legislature. But in the parliamentary system, but the president and the cabinet members are also members of the judiciary. The next type of government we want to consider is confederalism, that the confederal system of government. This is a government composed of strong regional government, but weak central authority. This is the type of government practiced by international organizations like the OAU, Organization of African Unity where each country or each state come together to form a government but each members of this government have authority of their own and thus can decide to pull out at any system at any time this type of government was practiced very long time ago by senegal and gambia what then was called the senegambia let's talk about main features of the confederal system of government one that is a weak central government and of course, strong regional components. The next future is that the past dominates the whole. We shall consider two merits of the confederal system of government. One, it encourages unity. Two, it encourages healthy rivalry, since each government, each component making up the region, or making up the confederal system or confederalism, is autonomous in its parts. We shall consider just one me me demerit. Component parts can easily succeed. Since they have autonomous power, they can decide to leave the, region, the central government. Next is the comparison between confederal system of government or confederal type of government and the federal type of government. In a federal government, sovereignty rests on the central. But in a confederal, it rests on the component states making up the central government. Next, in confederal components, in confederal, component states have the right to succeed. They have the right to, to break off. But that is not the case in a federal system of government. Again, a confederation has a weaker center but the federal system of government does not. The next we shall be talking about is monarchy. Monarchy is a system of government where the monarch or the king rules. 
we shall be talking about forms of monarchy now. One, absolute monarchy. Two, constitutional monarchy. In absolute monarchy, the monarch or the king has absolute unlimited powers. But in the constitutional monarchy, the king or the monarch has a limited power as stipulated by the constitution. Main features of monarchy. Government by the king or queen. Of course, in a monarch, the king or the queen rules. Second, it is hereditary. People assume the position because they inherited it, not because they, are, they were elected into some positions of leadership. Thirdly, it is based on an age-long culture. Let's talk about two merits of the monarchical system of government. One, political stability. Every member of the society looks up to the king or the queen as the ruler who got to the position by virtue of having inherited it. Again, it encourages national unity. There are a number of demerits of this type of government. One, competent citizens are not, who are not of the royal lineage may, not, may be left out of the government since they, uh, they do not have the royal blood running in their veins. Again, most public officials in the monarch are not elected. They assume political position because they inherited it. Because their forefathers were there, their fathers were there, so as soon as these ones leave, they naturally step into their shoes. The next is republicanism. This is a system of government in which the head of the state is elected. Unlike in the monarchical system of government, where the head or the king, rather, or the queen is not elected. But in a republican system of government, the head of government is elected by the masses, by the citizens, in an election. Features of republicanism. One, elected head of state. The head of state is elected in an election. Two, succession to the presidency is elected for a fixed term in office. Anyone who assumes the position of the president has to live there at the expiration of a fixed term in office. And finally, that's the last feature, is that a republic must be politically independent, free from external interferences. Let us quickly talk about differences between republicanism and monarchy. In a republicanism, the president is elected. But in a monarchy, the monarch, as we have said, comes into power through hereditary rights. Again, rule of law exists in republicanism, but that is not the case in monarchy. And finally, the head of state in the republic is called the president, but in the monarch, the head is called, in the monarchy rather, the head is called the monarch. I should ask a number of questions now, three of them, and I am very sure you should be able to respond to them. Question one, define confederation. I did tell you that a confederal system of government is a system of government where the center is weak and the component parts are strong because they maintain their autonomy. Next question, what are the features of a confederal system of government or the features of a confederation? One, weak central region and strong component parts. The next question I assume you should have the answer is what is monarchy? A system of government where the queen or the king rules and does so by virtue of hereditary rights. Now we go into constitution and constitutionalism. I am sure you may want to mistake constitution for constitutionalism. But after this time out you should be able to differentiate between the both. Now, let us define constitution. A constitution 